What's going on YouTube? This is Necrostevo. And something new here, we have the battles that I had in the Pikachu Cup, which was a competition that was held a couple of months ago. Of course, just now are you able to pick up your Pikachu. So be sure that you go and get your Pikachu if you participated before October 30th. Um, but anyways though, in this competition, I decided to bring Mega Manectric with Hidden Power Ground, uh, a little bit more of a mixed Electros with Assault Vest. Um, I have a pretty bulky Stunfisk, just all out offensive. I have a Life Orb Heliolisk, a Helping Hand Electivire with Shookaberry, and then a Supportive Electrode with um, Eerie Impulse, Swagger, Foul Play, and uh, yeah, so the shenanigans were pretty fun in this competition overall. Now I did seriously derp, I meant to put um, Lightning Rod on my Manectric, but after I bred it, I did not use the Ability Capsule and use um, get move it from plus over to lightning rod and so after i went to the competition i noticed it when i messed up on the first opponent that i tried to electrify my opponent's attacks with uh, so that didn't work out too well but even with that little bit of a handicap the competition was pretty fun overall now in this first matchup we both ended up starting out with our mega manectric um and hidden power ground is always a two at ko on manectric unless it has some bulk or a light screen up or something like that uh, I'm really surprised at how well his Electros is taking these hits, and that definitely means that it has Assault Vest. And so, after the exchange of a couple of moves, I ended up losing Heliolisk and my own Manectric, um, as he just kind of throws some attacks around with Electros, and uh, unfortunately, this means I have to go on to my Electrode and my Electivire. And Electrode, I really, really enjoyed in this competition. Uh, Shoutouts to Guy for actually recommending a lot of these sets here. Astral Ragtime, I'll leave the link to his description. Um, I'll leave the link to his channel, excuse me, in the description. But he came out with a lot of the sets that I use, or at least the ideas. And he also traded me his shiny electrode um, that I ended up using in this competition just because it didn't have a perfect attack or special attack IV, but I'm using foul play, so it didn't really matter. Um, you can see Eerie Impulse used there. Of course, Eerie Impulse does work against ground types like Stunfisk because it's just a status type move. It's not really using an electric type move. Strangely, it does not work against, like if you try to use it against an Electivire, then it will trigger the Volt Switch. So, I mean, excuse me, the um, Motor Drive. Wow, uh, sorry if I misspeak a lot. Very, very tired today but I really wanted to get this uploaded and get these battles going for this cup just to remind everyone to go pick up their Pikachu. Uh, I was really disappointed that I didn't end up knocking out the Electros that plagued me this whole battle on that turn because uh, now my Electro is gonna go down to Earth Power, which kind of sucks. I This is not one of the first battles I had. All the battles that I had are kind of out of order based on how I recorded them. But uh, yeah, so that was the first battle. Didn't do too well there. Uh, in the second matchup here, I saw this was, I think, the only person I faced that actually brought a Luxray. Um, Pikachu was actually relatively common in the competition. Pikachu was number, I think, three overall in the whole competition with Electivire and um, I believe Heliolus taking first and second. Uh, Heliolus, of course, in this competition, you could only use electric Pokemon. And this was a doubles competition that took place over the, the battle spot. And you can only use electric Pokemon, and of course, electric the stab moves from electric types aren't going to be very good against other electric types. So Heliolus became really popular because it can still use Hyper Voice to hit both Pokemon on the other side of the field. And Electivire and Stunfist are the only Pokemon that can use Earthquake or even Earth Power in Stunfist's case with any real power behind it. Um, besides them, the Rotom forms are really popular too. And uh, I ended up just using my own Stunfisk. It's kind of a bulky pivot. Here we can see that uh, his Stunfisk is actually going to be the one that has the Assault Vest after it takes Hidden Power Ground and it takes a Hyper Voice and only loses half of his HP. Uh, I think right there he definitely predicted a switch as he went for Muddy Water, which only hits your opponent's side of the field. Has lower accuracy than Surf, but it doesn't hit your partner. And it has the chance to drop your opponent's accuracy when they get hit by it. Now, expecting him to hopefully go for the uh, Earth Power on the slot that my Mega Manectric was in this turn, I switch into Electivire, who is holding the Shookaberry, so as long as he didn't double target my Manectric slot, I had a good chance to live anything that he was going to go for, barring a crit. 
Um, and now that I have Electivire in here, this was actually one of my favorite pairings in this tournament because I messed up the whole Electrify Lightning Rod thing. Um, I, with this pairing, Electivire can use Helping Hand to boost Heliolus's attacks, and then also I can use Protect with Heliolus to dodge the Earthquake from my Electivire. Now when facing other teams that especially had Pikachu and Raichu on them, I ran into a little bit of an interesting guessing game there because of course Pikachu and Raichu can learn Faint. And so I did have in one battle where uh, I actually think he disconnected in that battle where my opponent hit my Heliolisk with Faint the same turn I protected and tried to use Earthquake. So I ended up demolishing my own Heliolisk. Uh, but that's a little bit interesting to predict around. Now I am finally able to do some solid damage to both of his Pokemon here. Um, he does take out my Heliolisk, but with the Intimidate, he's unable to pick up the KO on my Electivire. And uh, because of the Snarl that I hit him with earlier, he doesn't KO Electivire with Muddy Water. Um, I think when he was using Muddy Water all those times, he was just trying to play around me protecting. But since it's not a stab move, Muddy Water is a water type attack, not a ground type attack, which uh, makes perfect sense, really. Um, he, lo he loses a lot of power behind it. Uh, right there, I figured that he would protect with the Electros, but I wanted to really make sure that I could pick up the KO. Um, Electro, uh, Electivire can also learn Faint, actually. Um, and of course, Pikachu and Raichu are, are at very apt users of Fake Out, especially in this type of competition. So basically, anytime I saw a Pikachu on my opponent's team, which wasn't as often as I thought it'd be, I always led with Heliolisk and Manectric. That way, I could not only get the Intimidate off in case it was a physical Pikachu, um, but then, at the same token, I would be fast enough to outspeed Pikachu and stop him from encoring me into uh, Protect. So, that was the thinking there. Um, of course, with the Electrode's moveset, if I use Swagger, then use Foul Play, then Foul Play's attack damage will get boosted because my opponent's attacking stat has been boosted up some too. Uh, Eerie Impulse was really just to hit things like Rotom with, or most commonly, uh, other opposing... Manectric, uh, Mega Manectric rather, and Heliolisk, just because once their special attack stats are taken down, they are pretty neutered, and all they can really do is attack. Uh, we do see a couple of support Mega Manectric running things like Light Screen, and um, I was the only one that I saw trying to use Heliolisk's Electrify attack. If Electrolyze, excuse me, if I had utilized Electrolyze properly with Lightning Rod, then I could have Electrified moves like, for example, opposing uh, Electivire Earthquake with my regular Manectric in play, and then it would then take the Lightning Rod, making both of my teammates immune to the attack, and then basically negating the attack. Uh, it worked great in practice before I tried to breed a Manectric with Hidden Power Ground. Really annoyed that I forgot that, but anyways, um, this is the opponent that ended up bringing Luxray to the battle, and I think that that would have worked out better if he had brought it earlier on, at this point, I have two Pokemon left, and he only has Luxray, so he ends up forfeiting. But if he had brought it in earlier in the battle, he might have been able to do a little bit more with it. Now, in the last battle for this video, uh, I just really, I'm just going to go ahead and say that I got destroyed. But I really wanted to share this video with you guys, just to show how ingenious some people are. Uh, this is the support Manetric that we see, and just when the battle first started off, Anytime I see an Electros, I figure that it has Drain Punch, and that's there almost primarily to hit uh, Heliolus. I guess it does offer some passive recovery, but for the most part, it's going to take out Heliolus. Now, uh, with these two Pokemon that I have in, it's a good matchup overall, because after a Hyper Voice or two, Elect Electros goes down, and Mega Manetra can't take those hits. Now, I do knock him into the range where it's going to not be enough damage to really do anything uh, plus he gets his moringa berry which i was immediately alerted to because it's just like wow you don't see that item very often and that item only activates when you get hit by a special attack and it raises your special defense um, seeing that he does not knock out my heliolisk with the drain punch means that he's incredibly bulky which means that he probably wants to set up with coil because that's electros's primary setup move raising his attack defense and accuracy all by one stage uh, my opponent set up Light Scream with his Mega Manectric, which is the only reason that it is still standing. And here comes the coils from Electros. Uh, it's very hard to pull off a strategy like that in doubles, especially um, in this type of competition. 
but Electros's typing really allows it to do such. Uh, and I was definitely on red alert when he brought in Rotom like this behind the light screen because Rotom can get psych up. And I really, really, really didn't want Rotom to copy the plus one special defense and the plus two defense and the plus one accuracy for overheat. I just didn't want to deal with that. So my strategy changed a little bit and I was trying to either get a crit on one of them. I wanted to throw as many of it attacks as I could at both of them. Uh, I had a chance at dropping their special attacks here and dropping their accuracy to try to, if I could drop the accuracy back down to normal, then maybe he'd miss an overheat or something like that. Uh, and then I switched to trying to get a toxic or rather a poison uh, hacks from Sludge Bomb on the Electros. Sludge Bomb primarily for um, any Rotom cut forms or Rotom mo forms rather that try to switch in. But uh, yeah, it. Spoilers, he sets up all over my face and I'm not able to do anything about it. Uh, but it was really impressive to see him pull off this strategy. It was very ingenious, and I definitely didn't think anything like that. Uh, interestingly, if I had my Heliolus in this battle with Manectric, and I had the proper ability on Manectric, I could have negated this strategy somewhat just by constantly going for Electrify on the correct Pokemon to negate that Pokemon's attack. So, uh, and for example, with Rotom, it wouldn't be able to just use Dark Pulse. And then, of course, it wouldn't be able to use Overheat because its attacks will be electrified. And then, therefore, transfer over to Manectra, giving it special attack boost, which would eventually bypass the uh, boost that he got from the light screen and the Moringa Berry. So, a little bit interesting there. Since he does have all those boosts, though, to both attack and defense, it still equals out. Um, I can try to do some confusion hacks here, but at this point in the battle, there's, there's just too much gone basically i don't have any resources to really handle what he's brought to the field at this point but that's okay I, this is why i love these types of competitions um i believe registration is actually still open for the spooky cup uh which is a, a devil's battle competition where you can only use pokemon that the global battle link has rated as spooky whatever criteria they use pikachu's in there and pikachu definitely isn't spooky but for whatever reason um and also no mega Pokemon are allowed, which makes the format a lot more interesting. And that's why I really love these, because they really allow people to be creative and have different strategies. So um, I'll be posting the rest of my battle videos from the Pikachu Cup. And if you don't have your Pikachu, definitely go download it. It has holding the light ball and it gets the special move Endeavor. Not really great, but hey, maybe you can have a Sash Endeavor Pikachu set or something. I don't know. Uh, but Endeavor's Pikachu's not the Pokemon I want using Endeavor. It just doesn't have the capabilities to, to pick up anything afterwards. Now, if they had a Pikachu where they re-released the Extreme Speed Pikachu, that would have been a good event Pikachu. But anyways, neither here nor there. But I hope you guys enjoyed this upload. Uh, let me know if you participated in the Pikachu Cup and if you plan to participate in the Spooky Cup. Uh, I'm kind of in the midst of team planning right now. But uh, hopefully whatever I end up using will be fun. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll talk to you later. Bye bye now.